Hey there guys, Mr. Nichols here to talk to you a little bit about the nitrogen cycle today. So this little uh, short lecture is going to be supplemental to what you should have already learned about from that activity that you guys just finished. So from that activity, you should be able to answer each of these questions. So the reason why we're focusing on this so much over the next couple of weeks is because nitrogen is incredibly important to all living organisms and you should have at least a fair understanding of why all organisms need nitrogen in order to survive. So we should be able to answer each of these questions based on uh, the previous activity that we did. So if you can't answer these questions or if you haven't done that previous activity from today, uh, the introduction to the nitrogen cycle, you need to make sure that you go back and do that now. So pause the video, go go and do that, and then come back to this. This is supposed to be supplementary. It's also preparing us for what we'll do over the next couple of weeks. Okay, so in short, nitrogen is essential for all living things. So nitrogen is an essential component for uh, building proteins. So um, the amino acids that come together to form you. And we'll talk more about those a little bit later on this year. But you just need to know that they're important. They make all of your uh, tissues and all of your enzymes. They help communicate throughout your body. So they serve a wide variety of different uh, purposes. So we need nitrogen to create those proteins. Okay. So most of the nitrogen that exists in our environments is from the atmosphere. Okay, so our atmosphere is actually composed of about 80% nitrogen gas. Now, unfortunately, we can't just breathe in nitrogen because it is uh, really strongly bonded together. Our lungs cannot diffuse it into our bloodstream so we could access it. So we need specific organisms to help us break that down. And oftentimes those are going to be bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria. So um, <clears throat> even though... Uh, most of our atmosphere is composed of nitrogen. We cannot just breathe it in. We need help from other organisms. And all life on Earth needs help from these organisms as well. So in short, uh, obviously you went into this with more detail before, uh, but basically the nitrogen cycle is going to follow a similar pattern to this. Now this is much more simplified. Uh, this doesn't really get into the nitrites and nitrates and ammonia. Um, we should have gotten that from our previous activity. But basically, if we look at this here, okay, we've got atmospheric nitrogen in the air, okay? So some of that nitrogen is going to be taking, taken into the soil through uh, denitrification. And then it's also going to be uh, taken into the soil from decaying plants and animals. So <clears throat> night bacteria that are in the soil are able to take that nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into a form that we can use. They can convert it into ammonia. So um, and then that ammonia is then turned into nitrite and then the nitrite is turned into nitrates that can be made available to plants and then animals can eat those plants. So that's kind of just a rough outline of what that would look like. Okay, so what we're mostly going to be focusing on, uh, and this will be happening when I'm out, so I wanted to make sure to support you guys with this, is that we're going to be looking at an aquarium. So if we think about an exterior cycle like this one, they're going to be very cyclical. So they have uh, pieces in place or components to them that allow those uh, organisms to basically reuse that nitrogen. But if we think about it, if we have a fish tank, for example, that's going to be what we call a closed system. So that nitrogen that's in there cannot get out on its own. So how does nitrogen get into that environment? So obviously we don't have, you know, soil that's sitting in there that has bacteria in it. So nitrogen actually enters the aquarium through the fish when it first is initially put in there, through the fish food, there's nitrogen in the fish food, and then through any plants that might be added to there. So every time that you add anything to your aquarium, you're always going to add more nitrogen to it. Okay, so let's look at another small uh, little cycle of this here. So if we think about this here, we've got organic material, so fish or their, their poop or from the food or the plants, that's how it's gonna be entered into there. So then organic waste, so fish, again, fish poop, uh, if a fish dies or if a part of a plant dies, it's gonna to start to decompose. 
And when it decomposes, as we looked at in our cycles earlier, it's going to produce ammonium. So ammonium is going to be uh, readily available inside of that liquid now in the water. And then it's going to be converted to nitrite by bacteria that actually needed to be added to your water in order for that uh, fish to survive and that uh, little ecosystem to be stable. So basically you have bacteria that are living inside of that water and you need to add that. Oftentimes you can get a little small product called nitrobacter. Um, it can uh, add these bacteria into your aquarium so that way it can process that nitrogen. So um, then we have uh, eventually that nitrite is going to be converted into nitrate by uh, nitrosoma nitrosomonas sorry, uh, bacteria. Uh, so we're not going to really focus too much on that chemical process, but you do need to know that we go from ammonium or ammonia into nitrite and then into nitrate. So nitrate is what can be made accessible to uh, plants and animals. So if we think about this image here, does this really look like a cycle? So it doesn't have, it's not a circle, right? So it doesn't go, it doesn't have a mechanism to reinsert that nitrogen back into the system. So what will eventually happen is as that nitrates and ammonia start to build up over time, if the bacteria are not able to process them, ammonia and uh, those nitrates build up, and then eventually we have to change that water. So that's the only way that we can cycle through that buildup of ammonia. If you've ever left a water or left a fish tank for, oh, for, go for too long, then you see kind of that scum start to build up on the inside. It seems really gross. So that buildup of ammonia and nitrates can actually be hazardous to your fish. They can be toxic to them if it gets too high, too high of a level. So a fish tank does not have that natural cycling process to recycle that nitrogen. So that's why we need to change the water because then that's our removal of those uh, nitrates and ammonias that have been built up in there. So again, this is kind of our, our process that we're gonna be exploring a little bit more uh, in the future. Uh, so make sure that you kind of go back to this later on if you need a little bit of extra help. Um, but I hope that that kind of revisited the nitrogen cycle a little bit for you. This incredibly important process that helps keep every one of us alive. So uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to um, answer them. Just keep in mind that I'm going to be out since I have my surgery this Friday uh, for about two weeks. So I'll still be available, but it might take me a little bit longer to get back to you. Uh, you can also communicate with the sub, Mr. Scott. Um, which I'll have his contact information in our agenda as well. So while I'm out, make sure that you are looking to the uh, looking to the agenda slide, so that way you're very aware of what's going on each each day and what you should be doing. So I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll talk to you later. Take care.